Overview Encoders measure the distance traveled by the belt. Some examples used in Cognex solutions are distance-based trigger and output delays. Distance-based delays are more reliable than time-based delays, and especially useful on belts that change speed or start and stop during operation. Because of problems, like belt slippage and slowdowns, Cognex recommends using encoders that can measure in real time rather than time-based settings. If significant belt slippage occurs, there is a responsibility to notify the customer that conveyor issues will adversely affect Cognex solutions from working properly. The two encoder types used in Cognex logistics solutions that we will discuss in this video are high-resolution and low-resolution encoders. The Kubler is a high-resolution encoder used for the Mettler Toledo Dimensioner. The bottom side line scan uses a 2,500 pulse revolution photocraft encoder. The low resolution photocraft encoder is used for multiple solutions, such as the Dataman 5 or 6 sided tunnels and Dataman bottom side. Proper installation and mounting. Note that the encoder mounting may be different from the frame drawings. Before mounting the photocraft encoder, Make sure the dip switches are configured correctly. The normal configuration of the dip switches for a scan tunnel is 12 pulses per revolution, which is dip switch number 4, and PMP sourcing, which is dip switch number 8. Note that all modular vision tunnel installations use 240 pulses per revolution, which is dip switches 1, 2, and 5 as opposed to our previous standard of 12 pulses per revolution used on other solutions. The high resolution photocraft encoder used for bottom side line scan while looking exactly like low resolution versions does not contain any dip switches. Other dip switch configuration settings can be found on the chart on the side of the encoder. When using an encoder with the Dataman bottom side solution, the static calibration test will calculate and suggest proper dip switch settings to set before moving on. These settings will be pushed by the software, but must also be changed on the encoder manually to match the software. It is important to label each encoder for easier troubleshooting. In some cases, due to limited space, there may be another encoder already installed next to the one being newly mounted. Additionally, the standard encoders Cognex uses are used by other companies, so there may be multiple types of photocraft encoders already installed in the work area. Labeling is an absolute necessity to avoid confusion. There needs to be a clear space under the belt and a beam must be present for mounting. Ideally, the encoder should be mounted in the center of the belt to avoid worn and frayed edges. Along with placing the encoder at the center of the belt, whenever possible, do not mount the encoder on belt rollers. It is acceptable only as a final option, as long as the encoder is made to not bounce when coming in contact with the belt seam. When assembling an encoder, the mounting direction is extremely important for proper use. If the encoder is pushing against the belt, there is potential for the encoder to rotate left or right, like trying to drive in reverse with a trailer attached. With pushing an encoder, there's likely to be more bouncing, more friction, and wearing out the encoder bearings faster. If the encoder is being pulled by the belt, the encoder is less likely to turn, like a trailer being pulled by a truck. Pulling the encoder will result in less bouncing since the bounces will be pulled straight. It is a best practice to ground the encoder. Earth grounding is ideal. In some cases, an ungrounded encoder will build up a static charge from rubbing against the belt. As a result, static discharge may occur, possibly distorting the encoder pulses and other electrical signals. Improper installation and mounting. Make sure to mount the encoder under the conveyor belt where the measurements are taking place, or the belt speed being reported could be wrong. This could lead to multiple issues. 
A wobbling encoder will produce inconsistent measurements, and as a result, the reported encoder speed will be incorrect. Bouncing like wobbling will create inconsistent measurements. Do not install the encoder backwards, pushing against the belt. There is a chance the encoder could slow down the belt. If the encoder is installed too tight to the belt, it may cut into the belt. It is easier to tell if the encoder is too tight, as there will be belt shavings found on the ground. A cut-up conveyor belt will need to be completely replaced. Conversely, if the encoder is installed too loose to the belt, the encoder will slip, not spin correctly, and cause inaccurate speed being reported. Wiring Wire the encoder to either a legacy I.O. box or the master breakout board on a CIO configuration. In most cases, the encoder should be set to input 1. If the hardware is plugged into input 1, the software settings should match. However, when using an encoder with a dataman bottom side solution with CIO, the encoder must be plugged into and set to input 0. Encoder software settings. In Dataman Setup Tool, there is a Pulse Encoder tab where the resolution must be input manually. When using an encoder with a Dataman reader, the correct resolution value must be manually entered in Setup Tool. This can be done under the tab Input slash Outputs, then Pulse Encoder Resolution. Distance delays are only as accurate as the resolution of the encoder. The encoder resolution settings must match the pulses expected from the physical encoder. The default setting used for logistics installs are 12 pulses per revolution on the encoder and 25.4 mm for pulse resolution in setup tool. In review, the standard configuration of the dip switches for a 12 inch wheel is 12 pulses per revolution, which is dip switch number 4 and PMP sourcing, which is dip switch number 8, and 240 pulses per revolution for modular vision tunnels, which is dip switches 1, 2, and 5, and PNP sourcing, which is dip switch number 8. Thank <laughs> you.